What's up, Kyle gang? All right, so we're here with this problem. So we have this block that we're pushing against the spring. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let go of that block and it's gonna pick up speed. And then it's gonna go up this hill. And we have two parts to this problem. So first we're gonna find how fast the block is going after it leaves the speed or after it leaves the spring. And then we wanna find how fast the block is going or we wanna how far up the ramp the block goes. So let's start with part A. So part A. Try to find how fast it is after it goes. So to do that, we're gonna use our work energy theorem. So what is our work energy theorem? The work energy theorem says work non-conservative is equal to change in energy. So what do we do with this, right? So work non-conservative, that's air resistance, friction. We are on a frictionless surface, so we know that this is gonna be equal to zero because there's gonna be no force of friction acting on it. So delta E, uh, so what is delta E, right? Well, that's all of our energies. So what energy is acting on this block? So uh, when it goes up the hill, there's going to be gravitational potential energy because it's going to go up. But we're not concerned about that because we're just doing part A right now. Part A is asking how fast does it leave right after. So it's staying on the same surface, so it's not going to go up or down, so no gravitational energy. But it is going to have kinetic energy, so that's one thing. So delta K is one, delta change in kinetic energy. And then we also have the spring involved, so we have to concern with the change in spring energy. So let's expand this out. So this is going to be K final minus K initial. Uh, that's, the chain, that's the definition of delta K, and then so this is U spring final minus U spring initial. So let's go ahead and uh, figure this out. So our kinetic energy final is going to be how fast it's going after it leaves the spring, but its kinetic energy initial, it's held in a static position at that beginning. It's being held against the spring, so it has no kinetic energy there. So we can say that this is equal to zero. So our, un our change in uh, our spring energy uh, final is also gonna be zero, right? Because it's gonna go back to its neutral position after the block leaves it. So we don't have to worry about the, this, the you know, energy held by the spring after the block leaves it. And then this is gonna be a, a force that we have. So what we're left with is K final minus U initial. Uh, so we can rewrite this. So it's gonna be U spring initial is equal to K final. So let's go ahead and expand these numbers too. So U spring is one half K, or this is K, and then x squared is equal to one and a half uh, mass velocity squared. And then if this is velocity final, this is x initial. So these one halves are gonna drop out, right? Because they're on both sides, so I don't have to worry about them. And we're left with kx, and we're trying to find its velocity, right? So to do that, we're gonna divide that mass over. So we're gonna get k x squared over mass is equal to velocity final squared. And then of course, you can just take the square root of this side. And there you go, you got velocity final by itself. So now all we have to do is plug in our numbers. So let's plug in our numbers to this. So our K, 400 newtons, 400 newton meters, I mean. Our X is 0.22, that's how far we can press the spring. Don't forget to square that. And our mass of the block is two kilograms. And if you do this, you're gonna get its velocity. Um, I have that. So 400, it's gonna be 3.11 meters a second. So that's how fast the block is going as soon as it leaves. So that's part A. Um, so let's go ahead and erase this and go on to part B. So we're going to use a similar technique to solve part B, and then we're going to use some, uh, you know, Pythagoras theorem, basically. So part B is asking how far up the ramp is it going to go. Well, basically, when we use our work energy theorem, we're going to find how far vertically up it goes, because no matter if it's on a really shallow ramp or a really steep ramp, it's going to go the same distance upward with that energy assuming it's frictionless. So we're going to find how far up it goes, and then we're going to find, and then we're just going to use, you know, cosine basically, or sine to figure out how far on the ramp it goes. So once again, we have work non-conservative is equal to change in energy. So like we said, this is equal to zero because there's no friction, and then our change in energy. So this time, um, so what I'm going to do is there's two ways you can solve this from here. You can solve it using the kinetic energy after it leaves a spring, or you can solve it like I'm gonna solve it. I'm gonna just take in the whole system again. I'm gonna say, from the spring, how far up is it gonna go, right? So it's gonna be change in kinetic energy, let me write that, plus change in spring, uh, plus change in gravitational potential energy, or gravitational energy. So I'm gonna expand this out. It's gonna be k final minus k initial, uh, plus u spring final minus u spring initial, my, uh, plus u gravity final plus, minus u gravity initial. So we got all this stuff now and we got to run through and figure out what are we going to use and what are we going to have to use. 
once again, our initial or our final velocity, instead of actually moving, we're gonna go up the ramp until it stops, which means our final velocity is gonna be equal to zero. So this is zero. But then also we know our k initial is zero because it's at equilibrium, or it's just being held against the spring of initial. So there's actually no change in kinetic energy in this system that we need to account for. So our U spring final, like we said, is zero because you know it leads the spring, but our U spring initial stays. Our gravitational potential energy final is gonna be a number that we concern ourselves with because it's gonna go up the hill. But that means that we're taking this to be our baseline of y, or, you know, our height is equal to zero. So at the beginning, it's gonna have zero initial gravitational potential energy because it's only gonna go upward. So then this is gonna leave us with the equation, negative u spring initial plus u gravity final is equal to zero. So let's rewrite this as u spring initial is equal to u gravity final. There you go, you end up with this really big equation and you can simplify it out into two terms and it's pretty nice. So. U spring initial, or like I said, one and a half x, or k, I did that again, kx squared, is equal to mass, gravity, height. That's uh, gravitational potential energy right there. That's the formula that you need. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're trying to find height, right? So to do that, we're just gonna divide by mass gravity. So that's gonna be kx squared over two mass gravity, and equal to its height. So let's put in our numbers for that to find how high up it goes. So k is uh, 400. Uh, x is 0.22 again. That's how far it gets compressed. So then 2, its mass is 2, and then gravity is 9.81. And if you plug this in, you get, it goes up 0.49 meters. So that's not how far up the ramp goes. That is how far vertically this is high it is equal to 0.49 meters. So what we're trying to find is how far up that ramp it goes, which is that number right there. So of course we're going to use cosine or sines cosines for that. So let's draw our triangle, right? So we have our triangle, this is 37 degrees, and this is 0 0.49, and we're trying to find this number here. So we know that sine is equal to opposite, uh, so it's gonna be zero point, or okay. Sine of theta is gonna be 0 0.49, opposite over hypotenuse, which is x. So then, uh, I've kind of run out of space, but basically we're gonna multiply the x over and then divide by sine. So it's gonna be x is equal to 0 0.49, divided by sine of theta, which is 37 degrees. And of course you plug this in and you get that it goes 0 0.82 meters up the ramp. So that is how far this goes. And how far black child up the incline. Okay, so there you go. So that's how you do this whole problem. Part A, part B. Basically you just gotta learn your work energy theorem, figure out when things cancel, when things don't cancel, and uh, you'll be good. So good luck on your physics homework, guys. See you next time.